Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you a couple of thoughts to help you guys out if you are struggling, fighting, fighting some inner demons that are keeping you from moving forward. I'll be honest with you, I face this on a daily basis. And there are several reasons for this, the way that you were brought up, the way that you are perceiving things. But I've found some ways of getting around this. If this is you, stick around until the end of the video because I'll share with you some things that can have helped me to move forward and can help you move forward as well. So this is how this works. When you are feeling like uh, it's like uh, an immense barrier in front of you of start cold calling people or doing whatever it is that you like already figured out that you actually have to do it in order to move forward. But even though you understand that you are still not doing it, there are some things still keep like in front of you and you need to understand exactly what these are so you can do something about them. This is how this works. You are having a perception of something that is, that is much harder than in reality is. It's much simpler in reality. And I'll give you an example. I'll, I, sometimes I struggle doing some cold calls and I find this sometimes kind of weird to me because I've been doing my career like that, but I still find that I have days like that. And what I figured out is to first pause and if you feel like that, it's because you're feel, feeling too much pressure to perform. And this is a problem because no one in the world, no one, I can't do it, no one can, you can't do it, no one can. If you are placing like upon yourself way too much, much pressure to perform on a, on a first single phone call. So this comes to the first point regarding overwhelm, which is you should not strive for perfection. I know this might sound counterintuitive, but perfection is keeping you from doing. If you want it to be perfect, it will never be. Think about it. If you have this in, in, like incredibly gifted guitar player, right? You hear him, right? And he's like, this is perfect, right? It's like playing super fast and super melodic and they know their stuff, right? But let me ask you, was this perfect for them, right? For them, it's like initiative number 133,486, right? This is the one that they recorded that you listened. So they kept practicing. They still, I would imagine that if you would ask them if the interpretation was flawless, they would tell you and point it out exactly where, they, where they, it was not uh, like they wanted, but they still played nonetheless, right? So what I mean by this is that if you, are f if you are struggling, you already have all the talent that you need, right? You already have everything in, within you because if you are watching this video, you are looking for answers, probably read some books, probably like talk with some people, probably actually made sales all, all over the phone. So that's not the problem. The problem is a barrier that you are creating when you are about to do your activities. Because think about it. If you were about to compare yourself with someone that is pretty much like lazy, it does, doesn't want to do anything, do you think there's a difference? Right? You want to do stuff, right? But you're still not doing it. And the, like, the stupid part of this is that pretty much you both are getting the same performance. The only difference is that the other one is not doing by choice. And you are not doing by choice because you are overcomplicating things. So. What you like, what helps me sometimes is just like relaxing and say, you're just making a phone call. That's it. Right? If he doesn't buy, he doesn't buy. And I know what you're thinking, but he needs to buy, right? Because you need to make money. But if you start thinking like that, you'll start feeling pressure. And the thing here is, if it's a, a numbers game, meaning you are calling people based on perception, right? You, you, they look like probably good candidates to close them, right? Like life insurance or real estate or vacuum cleaners, whatever the product that you're selling, right? It's a hit and miss. So there's three parts to this. The first one is first you knowing exactly like who you are. You know you are a salesperson and you know your product. So you need to learn about the product and need learn about sales, about like uh, calling people, how to talk with them, how, how to like deal with them, right? This is the first part. The second part is understanding that you're going to 
pretty much like it's a hit and miss. So you need volume. Because there are some people that look like good candidates, but you it will not be good candidates. You will figure it out pretty soon, like as soon as you start talking with them. But there, there are other ones that like, okay, they start talking to you, right? So this is the second thing. And the third thing is in regards to the economics of what you're doing. You must understand that you are using your time. Your time is limited. So when you are calling people, they must have the potential for you to close that, let's say, 50,000 premium or 5,000 in vacuum cleaners. Whatever the, like, the economics makes sense for you because you are only one, right? So you need to make it worthwhile every day that you are doing your calls. And what's, what's happening here now is that since you are looking for perfection, you're not doing one phone call, right? That doesn't work. And it's not about having like call reluctance. It's not about you not having the skills. It's not about you not knowing the product or not knowing the economics. It's about you. It's about you having this barrier and it's perfection. That's what I found. So the thing against perfection is I'm going to make just one phone call. That's it. And if I miss, I miss. That's it. You're just looking to get a meeting. And remember the therapeutical approach, like the, um, the psychotherapist approach when you're calling someone, like trying to be useful, trying to be friendly, but stick to your guns and show yourself as a figure of authority. I'm an economist. I'm a physicist. I'm a computer science major, right? So it's instant credibility because, okay, this person is like an, an expert in his or her field, right? So you just coming out and say, just calling, because like, be useful. You have a computer company, I'm a computer science major, right? See what I mean? So if the person says no, fine, hang up the phone and call another one. And this is what I found is that if you struggle, pause and say to yourself, I don't want perfection. I just want to make one phone call. If I miss, I miss, that's fine. I know it's counterintuitive. It's not fine because you want to nail it. But if you keep telling yourself that you have to make it on over the next phone call, it won't work. And it has to, you have to have numbers every single day. You need volume because otherwise you're fucked. You need volume in order to get sales at the end of the day. So you need to qualify people and you need to put yourself in a position where you are not overly pressured, even if you are to pay this month's hands meet. But if you do that when you are calling people, it's... Even if they fold because you're coming off too aggressive, you'll crack eventually. No one can stand this. No one. I, I promise you because I, I keep folding every single day because I'm like, I want to get this fucking thing done every day, right? And af after the second phone call, I have this enormous, in enormous fucking headache because I'm placing way too much pressure to perform, right? It's not that I don't know, don't know the product. It's not that I, don't, can ha I can handle people. I don't have any problem with that. It's just you. So you, you have to, your, your pressure level in, in yourself needs to come down a bit because otherwise, like, how in the world are you, are you going to do like six or eight f hours of phone calls every single day and not crack? It's, it's in, it won't work, right? So you need to calm down a bit, right? It's like when I ran the marathon, it's like in between pain and kind of forgetfulness. And what I mean by forgetfulness is like, your, your body is feeling pain, but there's this disconnect from it. There's this, this forgetfulness. It's like you are in a specific state that is very... Um, happens when you're running or doing something that is invoking a lot of pressure. In order for you to get to that state, it's like one foot in front of the other. You're not thinking about completing the marathon round now, right? It's just like, I'm going to start running, right? So you're going to start calling people, right? And as you do that, you're not placing way too much pressure to do like the, like, must be now not one foot in front of the other. That's it. Make one phone call. That's it. Hi, John. My name is Yogo. We have this call, a contact from LinkedIn. I'm a life insurance agent with MetLife. I like to be useful. That's it. And then keep repeating the process, right? If he says no, fuck him. If he says yes, fine, get a meeting. If he says no, fuck him. If it's if he says yes, get a meeting, right? Keep working like that and lower the pressure levels on yourself. This is the first one. If it's not about perfection, you need to understand that there's other reasons for this. The other one is clarity. This is another one regarding overwhelm. 
if you're not clear enough on your objective when you're calling someone, you will, you will immediately start feeling overwhelmed because your brain will be like, I need to use all my brain power to, lead, to deal with this because I don't know exactly what I'm trying to accomplish from this, right? So if you keep yourself really narrow, it doesn't matter if they say no. Remember about this. I know this is counterintuitive because you are an overachiever, just like me. But it's like, just stick to this to, to the end. So just say to yourself, I don't want to be perfect. I just want to be useful. Hi, John. And so on. The conversation I already told you. So be clear in exactly what is it your outcome that you're trying to get from the meeting. In my specific case, I want to get an appointment, a Zoom appointment or an in-person appointment, if in, like, uh, preferably. So when you are calling someone, John, Mary, Susan, S Smith, whatever, it's like, I want to get an appointment with this person. That's it. And if you say this to yourself, all your conversation would be around that specific goal. Because sometimes you'll find that people start conversation like all over the place and go to Pluto but you have to like not start talking about golfing. Just think about yourself. I need to get an appointment with these people. I need to get an appointment with John. He's talking, he's rambling, fuck him. I just need an appointment with this person like tomorrow at nine or 11 o'clock. You don't care, right? You're just like coming up with hours in order to get the thing done. So John, I can tomorrow at nine or Thursday at two o'clock. What's best for you? And then you wait. So this is the second one, remember. Not striving for perfection, just making a phone call, being a psych psychotherapist, and trying to be useful, but at the same time showing that you are a figure of authority, right? You like you are a PhD in physics, uh, in physics or something like that. The second one is being clear exactly on what you want to achieve from that meeting, okay? And the third one that I found that is really useful is that it's kind of a, a, a different interpretation of perfection, but it still is the same thing. And this is what, I'm, what I mean. It's like you're trying to get the, the, the perfect script, right? On, the, on one hand, you like to close people on the spot, right? So if you don't try to close people on the spot, meaning you're trying to make like a first step and you want to get the first appointment, right? And in order to do that, you're not striving for perfection. You have your clear understanding exactly what you want to accomplish, which is like a Zoom meeting. Right? But then you like taking the first step and you don't mind if it's not perfect. And this comes, comes directly related to this uh, uh, final and third step that I want to share with you, which is your script needs not to be perfect. And what you're selling, if they don't need it or you keep like if they, when you, they talk back to you, understand that okay, this is not a good fit, fine. You have seven or eight billion plus people in the world, right? Who gives a fuck about John, right? You have, another, we have more people, right? So it's just like, if it's a fit, fine. If it's not a fit, fine. I know what you're thinking. It's not fine because you want to close everybody, but no one can close everybody. It doesn't work like that. It's a numbers game. And the problem now is that because you are tied on schedule, you're tied on money, you're tied on your dreams, you're tied on like, you just want to, don't want to wake up and as soon as you wake up, it's like you go through the day, just want to go to sleep, right? If you keep doing that, you'll get older. It's like days will go by, weeks will go by, months will go by and you won't have a fucking sale done. And this is a problem. So I want to share with you that if the approach of the perfectionist and all that crap is not working, you need to change. And the way for you to do that is acknowledging that it doesn't work if you're trying to bench press 1,000 pounds like in, like in, in one go. It's a, you need to build the momentum. It's like adding more weight. And then do another one, you, you get stronger, add more weight. Do like another one like for several months and all that, like, and then add more weight. You get keeps getting stronger, right? But you're trying to go from one to the tenth floor in one go. It doesn't work like that. And your brain knows that, but since you are in, in a situation that because you are very intelligent, because you're very perfectionist, because, because you are overachiever and you want to get things done, you're placing way too much pressure on getting the thing done. And this is keeping you from moving forward. This is what I want to share with you because I've ran the marathon several times and the process of running it, it's not like you want to go from the first step to the, like after two or three hours of running, right? It, it doesn't work like that. It's like step by step. Like one step at a time, right? So the only thing keeping you from doing that because it's pretty much effortless like to 
pick up your phone and just call someone, right? But if you're not doing that, there's a problem there and you need to acknowledge exactly that you have a problem there. And the problem is being overwhelmed. You start to procrastinate because you're asking, you are demanding way too much weight on the first bench press. You are demanding to close a person, you are demanding to know everything about everything and you are demanding to be super perfect on your script in order to get paid now. It doesn't work like that. You're not going to be perfect you're going to be messy, you're going to get rude people, you're going to get nice people, you're going to get so-so people. So as long as you understand that, okay, I'm going to make a certain amount of phone calls today and they already know, just hear me out, just tell yourself this, follow me with this exercise, just tell yourself this, I already know that I'm going to call people that are not going to answer the phone. I already know that I'm going to call people that it's like, like, call me later, call me tomorrow, or I'll call you later and all that crap. It's like yellow people, bye-bye. And you already know that you're going to have people that are going to tell you like upfront, no, or if they are douchebags or if they are, um, if they're just plain of like, like pretty much like cowards, they, they will come up with an excuse or something like that, right? Nevertheless, you just disregard them. But then you're going to get some people, the minority of people that you call, let's say you make 30 calls today, like you're going to get one people, like one person, two people, something like that, right? It's like, it's a good day. You got two appointments for tomorrow. See what I mean? So it's like you make 30 phone calls of which you already know that 28 is going to be like, you got a surprise because you were expecting one and you got two, right? And if you keep doing that, let's say tomorrow you are able to, let's, I'm just going to make a phone call, trying to be useful. Hi, John, and all that conversation I already told you about. And after 30 phone calls, just got another one. So if you're striving to get 20 appointments, which is the industry benchmark of everyone that got into a million dollar round table, the top, uh, the top producers in the world got there by having 20 meetings a, a week. So you just got to today, right? And tomorrow you got another one. So when you get from Monday to Friday, when you get a Friday, you just like, you got 15 appointments, right? It's pretty close to 20, right? So keep doing that. Then Saturday, make a couple more phone calls, right? Like I was telling you, the only way for you to do this, you being consistent. And if you are not being consistent, it's because of these things that I just told you about. So remember not to be perfect. Remember not to strive for perfection. That's the main thing. The second one is being clear exactly what you are trying to accomplish from that phone call. Just want to make uh, have a meeting with Susan. And the third one is just one more step, right? And all this wrapped around in a package that you already know that out of the 30 calls that you're going to make, a lot of people are not going to pick up the phone. You will have red and yellow people, meaning people will say no and people will say maybe, right? And then you're going to have like one or two, two to one or two okays, two yeses. That's what you wanted. If you do that, if you keep doing that, you will have 20, 20 meetings in one week. Now, this is a good thing. Out of all that crap that you went through, you now have 20 meetings, right? Out of these 20 meetings, it's like if you get, if you get like 30% out of all these people, let's say like 21 meetings, like you have like seven people that you closed, right? And if each one of those, these people, it's like represents 5,000 or 10,000 in premiums, you have 70,000 there in one week. 70,000 in one week times 52 weeks, that's a lot of money. And if you get a half of that in, pre in, in commissions, if that's your commission bracket, you're done. So... Before you get to that, right, before you can say fuck the world because I'm already financially independent, before that, you have to get the meetings. You have to have volume of meetings of people to talk to, right? And before you get the volume of meetings of people to talk to, of which you'll, you'll close uh, pretty much like 30% or 33.33% .33 in a specific case, right? You're going to go through the process of calling a bunch of people every single day, right? And the industry benchmark is between 20 and 120 calls. This is the, the in industry benchmark. So let's say you do 30 calls or 50 calls or 60 calls. It's like a half, right? If you do that, in order for you to do that and to be consistent at it, 
you have to fight your inner demons and your inner demons are like it's overwhelm it's uh, the pressure that you're placing upon yourself in order to perform it's the first thing and it's not striving to be perfect it's one step at a time and it's being clear on your motive remember these three things and i want you to be successful because the economies work when entrepreneurs like their businesses start working better and i want your business to start working better and this is what i found so far that works for me and i'll be honest with you sometimes like today i just fail because i i'm like so i calm myself down and at least i'm trying to like uh, uh, share my information what i'm going through so that it can help you because all of us go through this and i find that when you talk to someone when you share what you're going through you, you start getting calmer because you start understanding what the problem is sometimes i find that you are way too much uh, you, you're inner focused and if you're trying to do the thing like the opposite meaning like how can i help people because i'm not the only one going through this like and the problem is that because you have experience you you know exactly what you're going through you know exactly what the problem is so when you share this with people i think it's a good reminder i think sometimes i think you go through things and then when you figure a, a way around it you share it with people so that they can get around it as well this is what i wanted to share with you guys if you have any comments leave them below i'll be more than happy to respond and be great nothing else space